G'day, how are you doing? Hopefully you're doing very well, keeping healthy and safe and doing pretty good on this side of the desk. Today we are going to look at the new Lenovo IdeaPad 1. This is a 14 inch laptop and it is extremely affordable. It is aimed towards the K12 sector market, but don't be fooled uh, that it's an entry model or budget conscious this does house the new AMD Ryzen 7000 processor. And as a spoiler, I'm very impressed by its performance. And again, I think if you can have a look at what it looks like and even have a feel of it, I am actually very impressed by Lenovo as the build call there. I was expecting, this is what I was expecting from a ThinkPad, which is the commercial range is, is very tough. This is extremely, it has a good premium feel to it. Whoa. I can definitely tell. Now I will be testing the performance, the temperature, the fan noise, and some of the features of this computer. And as always, I will be putting time stamps on this video so you can skip to a different section that you may be interested to save you time. Let's have a quick look at the port. Starting on the right hand side, we've got the SD card reader, we've got USB type A port. This is USB 2.0. And along there's nothing along the back here. And then on the left hand side, we've got the AC power port. We've got another USB type A. A port, this is USB 3.2 Gen 1. We've got a HMI port, this is version 1.4B. And then we've got a USB Type C port, this is USB 3.2 Gen 1. Now, this is data only, so it does not pass through power, it does not also do power delivery. So, you need to charge the laptop using only this AC power port. And then we've got a headphone jack, and that's about all there is. The display is a 14 inch full HD display has an aspect ratio of 16 by 9 and it has a rating of 250 nits of brightness but the one unit I got it managed to measure in maximum of 261 nits the display is not crazy bright but thanks to the anti-glare matte finish display I was still able to consume multimedia and working on documents in direct sunlight measuring the color gap coverage of the full HD display it resulted with 56.6% sRGB coverage, 39.4% Adobe RGB coverage, and 40.6% DCI-P3 coverage. This is a recording from the 720p webcam from the IdeaPad 1. This is the video and audio unedited so you can hear and see what the quality webcam is like. And as always, I've got two types of lights currently turned on for this test. Got my one stereo turned on, also the down lights in this room turned on for ambience. If I turn off my one stereo light off, you'll see this adjust, and I think it's just amazingly quick. Now, the two downlights in front of me is a bit far away, so there's not much light here on my face. This is what I consider a dark environment. Now, I'm going to turn on my one street light back on, and let's adjust. Again, it's just pretty quick here. And with the webcam, there is a privacy shutter on it, and it's just a little lever above the webcam. You can actually switch it off, and you see a physical covering of the lens. And even if it's turned on, at least there's something blocking it, so you don't need the electrical tape or blue tack anymore. There are two speakers located on the bottom front on either side of the laptop. When I tested the maximum volume of the speakers, it managed to measure a peak of 83.6 decibels. I'll consider this on the quiet end of the scale compared to other laptops. As for the sound quality, it does have strong mids and highs, and it is more balanced towards in between the mids and highs, but we're not getting this very tinny sounding. They actually got good clarity out of those speakers, the acoustics and the reverb is okay. So that attributes to not having that tinny sort of feel to the sound. How's the build quality of the ITU powered? Surprisingly, the build construction is something I did not expect from a budget laptop like this. This has a very premium feel. We've got aluminium on top. It's very smooth feeling to it. We do have plastic at the bottom and with the Inside here with the palm rest, we got aluminium also. It's just that very nice, very premium feel aluminium too as well too. Now, as for the actual keyboard, we got quite rigidness for it. So it is gonna take a bit of beating. And with also the hinge, I'm just gonna do the hinge test here. It is holding not bad at all so that's my wiggle test it is holding there now i'm just gonna do the one finger test while i'm at here so with one finger and it does grip it is gripping and gripping all the way through i'm gonna have to do two fingers to get all the way through and it pretty much opens up to nearly 180 degrees it's probably what i'll say 170 degrees and that's as far as it gets 
uh, now the actual hinge is all along here and we've got the exhaust running behind the hinge it comes with a 42 watt hour battery and i consider this a small battery for a 14 inch laptop but i managed to still get eight hours and 24 minutes for modern office battery life tests in pc mark 10 two hours and 47 minutes for gaming and eight hours and 56 minutes for video playback on the Procom battery life test for me this has actually got pretty good battery life considering it's got a very small battery looking at temperatures and fan noise when i took my measurement the ambient temperature in the room was 25 degrees celsius and just to give you a reference point your hand at around about this sort of temperature is around about 34 degrees celsius so i took my base measurement the computer is idle and the hottest area on the keyboard measured a maximum of 34 degrees celsius and as for the fan noise hit a maximum of 35 decibels so it's practically quiet and the average internal core temperature was 35 degrees celsius then i put 20 percent load on the computer that's pretty much average use so that's tasks like office productivity work surfing web streaming videos and the hottest area on the keyboard measured a maximum of 33 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it had a maximum of 36 decibels. So the fan has spun up very little bit. And the average internal core temperature was 42 degrees Celsius. Then I put 50% load on the computer. And the hottest area on the keyboard measured a maximum of 37 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it spun all the way up to a maximum of 37 decibels still very quiet and the average internal core temperature was 50 degrees celsius then i put a hundred percent load on the computer and the hottest area on the keyboard measured a maximum of 43 degrees celsius and as for the fan noise hit a maximum of 40 decibels and the average internal core temperature was 68 degrees celsius also measured the bottom back cover while it had a hundred percent load and the hottest area on the bottom back cover was 60 degrees celsius Looking at the results of the temperatures and fan noise, I've got to admit, the AMD Ryzen 3 7320U processor definitely is a cool running laptop. And a Lenovo have done a fantastic implementation of this processor, as you don't really get much fan noise coming out of this, and it is a very cool processor. Testing out the stability performance of the processor over long duration of time of this new Ryzen 3 7320U processor and I've got 100% load running on the processor, memory, storage and also the graphics over five and a half hours. I can see from the AMD website it reports that this processor has a maximum boost clock of 4.1 gigahertz and a base clock speed of 2.4 gigahertz. For this test we want to see this above 2.4 gigahertz. And I can tell you that seeing this running on 100% load, it is pretty much running anywhere and ranging from 3.3 .3 to about 3.6 gigahertz. But mostly it sits at 3.5 to 3.6 gigahertz about 80% of its time, which is way above the base clock level 2.4 gigahertz and actually clearing closer to the maximum boost. And we can see the internal temperatures is ranging anywhere between 67 to about 69 degrees Celsius. So we've got plenty of headroom left for this processor. I think AMD and Lenovo have actually done absolutely a fantastic job on this ideal pad. I'm actually quite blown by this processor from AMD doing extremely well and keeping it cool. And this is running on a lot of load for a long period of time. Fantastic work, guys. Here's the results of the benchmarks ran on the ideal pad one. This one's configured with a Ryzen 3 7320U processor with 8 gigs of RAM and 250 gig SSD. And here's the results for Passmark. Citibench R23, PC Mark, 3D Mark, Crystal Disk Mark, Geekbench 5, Procon Office, Procon Photo Edit, Procon Video Edit, Fugan Photoshop, Fugan Premiere Pro, Blender, Luxmark, Eugene Engine. Let's have a quick look at the internals. We've got the 42 watt hour battery at the bottom here, and the battery connector is right here. So if you need to disconnect the battery to diagnose, or troubleshoot battery or power issues this is the battery connector here now on the right hand side above the battery we've got the storage so the ssd and it does have room to change to a 2280 format ssd and you can see you just need to remove this bracket here but you can see the screw holds hold on the 228 format now the memory or the ram is soldered to the system board you can either get the 8 or the 16 gig config for this so 
being soldered, you need to make sure you purchase the correct amount of memory as you can't upgrade it later on. And then we've got the processor with one single heat pipe with the single home system fan. And then we've got the WAN card or the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi module right here. And then we've got the CMOS battery is connected right here if you need to disconnect the CMOS battery. It's more like for the clock issues in a way. Overall, I'm very impressed by the Lenovo ThinkPad 1. The actual performance of it, wow, AMD has smashed it out of park on this new Ryzen 7000 processor, especially this Ryzen 3 7320U processor. We've got absolute fantastic temperatures which are very well controlled by Lenovo and AMD. And the performance, you actually get four performance cores. You're not getting two efficient skill or two performance cores, you're getting four performance cores. It actually has an advantage with the four performance cores because you can actually run older style windows on it so you can actually run windows 10 or windows 11 whereas with the intel 12th or 13th gen you do need to kind of run windows 11 to take advantage of the efficiency cores whereas with the AMD 7000 you don't have to worry about so this is going to be good for the k12 sector which may run on older os's so that's absolutely fantastic now as for the build quality of the ideal pad, I'm pretty much blown by it. It's pretty much what I think pad would be. It's got this very premium feel, although there's a bit of a conundrum about this, is that because we've got aluminium, aluminium has a little bit prone to scratching and this being kind of like marked a bit to the K12 sector, to the students and stuff like that. I think maybe with plastic it is more resistance to scratches. Oh, that gets thrown to school bags and stuff like that. So that's kind of thing. But if you're really buying for personal use, I think that's a fantastic feel. It just feels great. But yeah, again, it's a bit of a weird thing. It's like, do we have that? You've got to just put that into mind. Now, as for the keyboard, that's absolutely strong as just like I was expecting from a lot of ThinkPads. This has that ThinkPad feel to it. Absolutely great here. Yeah. Now, as for the speakers, we've got some decent two speaker system here. I just wish it had a little bit more volume just because we're going to be running with probably what the younger sector with the kids and stuff like that. They probably just want, and especially being outdoors more, that's where I just like to have a little bit more volume there. Now, as the display, it's actually again just very similar to like Enterprise ThinkPads. We actually got decent surprise. I love the map feel to it and it did all right when I was working outdoors now as for the selection of ports they're actually good selection of port the only thing I do wish again it's this USB-C port I wish you can actually charge using the USB-C port that is only a data only just because if we want to actually plug in adapters or pass through power or even just plug in docks we can actually charge this without having to plug in the AC power port so it's just one of the things I wish for but again look at this the price of the Lenovo Idea Pad, what I think an absolute steal for what it is. I think AMD and also Lenovo have actually done an absolute fantastic job. I can't recommend it any more than what I saw. So I hope you find this video informative or enjoyed it. If you did, and support my channel, smash and share this video. It does help me out. And as always, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. And I'll see you next video.